And the key in behind that in terms of thinking about resource development or resource alignment is to think about why you need to do the resource alignment. So the first and most obvious for Alaska was we have a pretty significant skills gap that we're trying to close. We have over 58,000 Alaskans who don't even have a high school or GED uh, to their name. When you consider that in Alaska we only have about 600,000 people, that's a pretty significant portion of the state that right off the bat their skills are deficient. Secondly, we wanted to put Alaskans to work. As many of you probably remember the um, uh, pipeline. We, this group I'm looking at, we all generally remember the pipeline, unfortunately. That was about 30 years ago. 28,000 people came to Alaska to build the uh, Alaska, um, Trans-Alaska Pipeline. Most of those people, almost all of them, were from out of the state. We would really like to see in any of our future mega projects that we focus on hiring Alaskans first. And third, we wanted to make sure that the existing programs that we were having were really benefiting and improving as a result of the alignment of our resources. We focused, number one, on increasing awareness and access to career opportunities. Many of you were, particularly through the K-12 system, over the last 25 years, there's been an erosion of the knowledge base, particularly around the trades and the crafts. And so we're looking at young people coming out of school systems today who um, understand the concepts of doing math, but when we apply that, say, to a carpentry project, which is, for example, building a set of stairs, so we needed to create some opportunity for young people to understand the skills that they learned in the school system, how did that relate to them going on in their careers in the future. The other thing we recognized was our career and technical education systems were really trying to do the best that they could to fill that gap, and yet, proportionately, it was a fairly small uh, uh, portion of the state's overall resources. In some local school districts, you might see as little as $15,000 going towards um, career and technical education. So what did career and technical education get you when you only had $15,000 to work with? Quite frankly, nothing. It resulted in uh, closets that equipment was stored in, and that was the best. So we've seen a real resurgent of access to the resources that are available to young people by connecting with our career and technical education system. The technical education system for us also um, in focuses on really incorporating some of those um, counseling aspects. We've tried to get beyond the 300, 500 students that we have to do schedules for and focus on what does that young person need in terms of their next choice for going to work. So next slide, please. In terms of other alignment issues, you know, we focus on um, uh, developing our training programs for operational and technical uh, management of our workers. And what that simply meant is that, just like you've heard already, there's many opportunities for um, folks to enter into uh, crafts and trades besides the traditional construction work. So we looked at our mega projects and said to ourselves, we have to be prepared to support workers that are going to go beyond that uh, um, entry level or even that journeyman work status of actually performing the task and be prepared to be things like construction managers, project managers, things like that. So we focused on uh, supporting our uh, post-secondary education system. Our university system is critical to that and has focused on building a number of uh, curriculum-based programs to support that particular need. So we have these components that support a major industry going to, uh, coming to Alaska and being able to uh, deliver its product, whether it's a gas to market or uh, a gold mine or any of the other projects that have been mentioned already. We really saw the connection between uh, uh, what we call our pre-apprenticeship programs, our construction academies, our apprenticeship programs, our tech prep current programs that Sally Speaker represents, and also our incumbent worker programs as needing to be aligned and supported through registered apprenticeship. Now I can talk to you about all different kinds of pots of money and quite frankly every single state while we have some similar pots of money we also have um, unique pots of money that are kind of reflective of just our organizations. They might be uh, funds that come from the legislature they might be funds that uh, you acquire as a result of some demonstration project, a national emergency grant. There's a whole scope of different funding sources that can support registered apprenticeship. 
The point is, how do you take those resources and take advantage of them in a way that supports your mar labor market overall? 